Welcome back, everybody, to These Aren't the Nerds You're Looking For. Lorenzo Fawn sitting here with Kevin Horde. How are you doing there? It's snowing. <laughs> That's all uh, I can say. Whereas over here, as I was telling you before, we got Santa Ana winds. So it's really dry and it's really dusty. And shit's on fire, which is not fun. Yeah. I was uh yeah. I was reading about that today. Right. Guys um, got more fires going on north of uh somewhere. North of LA, which um as, uh, I don't want to start here, but as of this recording, uh Thousand Oaks had a tragic event happen, which was a shooting at the borderline bar and grill. And that is also where the fires are. Uh, That's so. Those events, <laughs> independent of themselves, are tragic and terrible. And uh, combine those together, and I, right? I got no words for that. So. It's yeah, it's not good. And uh, last I saw, I took a break before recording here to go see a movie. But last I saw, the fire even jumped the 101 freeway which usually doesn't happen it's it's happened you know it's not a rare occurrence but it definitely sucks when it happens because uh you know it's like eight lanes of traffic so usually fire fighters are hoping that yeah like it'll be contained up to the freeway so we can just focus there but the winds were strong enough that it mm. blew embers across the freeway and sparked to the other side so that's eight lanes of traffic plus two shoulders on each side, like each direction? S- something like that, yeah. So you're looking at 80 plus 24 plus 24, 130 something feet? Something like that, yeah. Easy. Um, What the local news I was watching was saying that the winds are strong enough that um, – the reason the fire spread so quickly is number one, there's the fire itself has a lot of dry brush to feed off of. So like the wall of flames can travel as quickly as like 50 miles an hour, just burning shit up. That's right. Crazy. So yeah, if you see fire in the distance and you're at your house, get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Just get the fuck out of there. It doesn't matter how far it looks. Mm -hmm. That shit moves. Right. Right. And then the reason, the other part of it being able to spread is the winds here are so strong that, you know, it might be like sustained winds of like 20, 30 miles an hour with wind gusts up to like 60, right. something like that, right? So those are shooting embers all over the place. And local news was noting that the embers can fly as far away as like three to four miles and spark mm-hmm. another fire somewhere else, right? Right. So uh, that's just kind of one of those weird realities that, I have gotten very used to living with having since moved to California. Yep. Um, It's just, yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, I've definitely just earlier this year been able to just wake up, open up the blinds uh, in the back of my apartment and see that the, there's a mountain range here in Orange County that I can see out of the back of my uh, apartment. And, you know, every now and then I'll just see a big old plume of smoke coming out of them. So, yep. <laughs> yeah, you guys uh, out there, you got more than more than one thing going on as far as natural disasters go. <laughs> right, right. It, it. What's funny enough is that the big concern for a lot of my friends who have moved from Michigan here, earthquakes is not. It's like the lowest thing on my list to worry about here. <laughs> right, right. At you least know. you don't have uh, like Pacific hurricanes that come. Right, at you. right. Um, yeah, use, they the uh, they always end up south. They always hit Mexico the way the mm-hmm. that that current of wind hits. Um, because like every now and then, what's weird is like we always kind of hope for a tropical storm to kind of float its way up here because of rehydrate the drought. everything. Right, exactly. Um, but you know, usually it it ends up hitting mexico like it'll hit baja california and then head towards like that el paso wing of texas instead sort of thing but yeah nope we never uh never get that yeah 
trying to think of yeah we, yeah we don't get tornadoes like we used to get and i used to have to worry about in michigan there's definitely no snowstorms that you yeah. get every now and then st louis is in tornado alley yep <laughs> uh near the new madrid fault line oh boy and uh yeah i mean that's it's just part of specifically like, like where i live is uh where like the hardcore flooding was in 93 oh, uh, gosh, so yeah. we're cuz like i'm near the confluence of the mississippi and the missouri so flooding issues but it's shit would have to be like 200 feet deep to get to where my house is and that, that okay. ain't going to happen so right I, I that's about that so you have at least that yeah yeah but uh you know the fringe areas whatever along the right. river i don't live in a river bank i live in a <laughs> you house don't live yeah, not in a van down by the river. I do not live in a van down by the river. So, um, but yeah, so that's the that that's the circumstances under which we're recording this today. Yep. So I didn't mean to start with the downer. It just was the current thing uh, as we are recording this. Which when does this come out? By the way, this is later. Later, on. I had it up, but. Uh, oh, December 5th. Okay. So, How about that? Yeah, December 5th. So, uh, like, a, basically a full month from our recording date. Uh, we are trying to catch up for the holidays, guys. So we are trying to... Catch up to get ahead. Right, we're trying to get ahead so that there's no interrupted flow. But, uh, of course, Kevin and I will still be recording Resistance, I think, right about this time. Uh, I would say so. Right. Unless Resistance happens to take a holiday break, which the Clone Wars has. Right. Um, one thing of note is time dilation from last week we talked about The Deserter, right. uh, which aired the same day as Grievous Intrigue. So that mm-hmm. was season two, episode nine, season two, episode 10. This is season two, episode 11, and it had a full three week break. So this episode right. came out January 22nd of 2010. Um, mm-hmm. And I will share my opinion of that. Yeah, I found that interesting up. too. Yeah, let's let's get the basics out of the way. Sure. We will be speaking about Lightsaber Lost, as you mentioned, episode two, or, uh, season two, episode 11. Mm-hmm. Um, air date January 22nd, 2010. Correct. Uh what else do I usually say here? <laughs> usually we just so, flow right into the cookie fortune cookie, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, director is Giancarlo Volpe, uh, written by Drew Z. Greenberg. Um, mm-hmm. Supremely coincidental. This is season two, episode 11. Production number is 211. And mm-hmm. viewership is 2.11 million. Uh, so we got a triple 211 here. How about that? That's yeah. Uh, takes place in twenty one BBY. Bizarre. It is bizarre. Mm-hmm. Like I was looking at it and I was like, I'm writing the things down. I'm like, okay, two point eleven production, two point eleven uh, viewership, two point eleven. I was like, hey, how about that? Yeah. What can you do? Yeah. So how how do you feel about this break? Because it it had a break leading into the January first episodes as well. Correct. From December fourth to January first, right. So that's about. So it's a weird, staggering weeks. Yeah. Like it's it's a strange staggering of episodes, especially like. Uh, we're kind of like leaning into the middle of the season as well, right? Yeah, like uh, we've broken the. Uh, we're not quite halfway. We're yeah, I'd say midpoint. Right. Like, we're getting towards midpoint. Mm-hmm. So it's just a weird place to try and break this up. And it's weird that they would drop two special episodes on a holiday just to throw it there and then be like, well, we're still kind of on a break. We'll be back 22nd. Yeah. So uh, these episodes aired on Friday. So January 1st just happened to be on a Friday, right? Okay. So it was just like a double episode that came out. January 1st, that Friday, and then 
like that aired three weeks after the previous one and then not another one aired for another three weeks it seems that seems like a bit odd choice um my thing with this and i will get into this more is that um when we get to the the newsreel do you got a mm-hmm. fly over there or something like no like around? i i can hear the like i mentioned the reason i i'm glad we talked about the wind is i keep hearing it but like it sounds oh this the last time we had santa Ana winds when i went to work the next morning just to get back to that really quickly uh there were definitely so the way my apartment building is um mm-hmm. it's kind of like a big u-shaped you mm-hmm. know and i have like my apartment door leads straight to the outside so it's like motel style i guess is how i would describe that right i'm not an apartment building where like i exit out into a hallway or anything you know right my door leads straight into like a courtyard area um and last time we had santa Ana winds like a month or so ago uh there were definitely a shit ton of roof tiles missing so (laughs) Hmm. i'm just wondering if that's what's happening right now on the roof above me as well so i'm on the second floor and uh, i have a vaulted ceiling and uh Uh, what lorenzo is saying is that he lives in the penthouse of his right (laughs) apartment building (laughs) yep the nice penthouse in the loveliest area of orange county california um but yeah so i keep just i keep hearing weird like the number one i keep hearing the walls rattle and then the roof rattle and then shit outside prob like you know neighbors stuff in their balconies and stuff uh probably gone now <laughs> I, I couldn't so, say yeah i don't know that's the thing like i would immediately forget once and if or when i do move out of here into like a house with a backyard with like lawn furniture mm-hmm is like the first thing I need to put on my to-do list is either I am going to be diligent about putting that shit away when I'm not using it mm-hmm. or like I automatically chain everything to cinder blocks. Like <laughs> anchor it, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I've got, uh, I've got patio furniture that has, uh, you know, just like outdoor cushions mm-hmm. and, uh, I never ever, put them back in like the cushion container that's on like the back side of my garage uh mm-hmm. when i'm done with them so it inevitably always rains and they get soaked and then i have to right. leave them out and then once they're dry i'm like hey i should put those away and then i'm like nah i'll go drink a beer in the garage and then it rains and uh-huh. uh, so they're out right now so they're getting snowed on i don't know they've been out <laughs> for a while but yeah and just yeah. anchor them just anchor everything yeah yep. i think that that would be my plan so so that's my yep. advice anyways back to yeah know. let's hop back kevin was this. just noticing visually i was my eyes were fleeting away around Lorenzo was of, looking around like he was uh like there was a ghost in this apartment testimonial during uh, ghost hunters international or something i'm not really sure right um <laughs> carry so on so you, you had asked me how i feel about this three week break and yes. we will be able to segue into that here in a moment when we get through or to the newsreel. So why don't you okay. drop the fortune cookie and yeah. uh, we'll move forward. Fortune cookie for this one is easy. Isn't always simple. Nice and straightforward. Yep. Um, this one I will attribute having seen the episode and thought about it just now. Okay. Uh, Tara, what's his face? Uh, uh, what is it? Tara Sanubi. Sanubi. Yeah, like this one definitely. It doesn't fit with the episode per se, but we'll get to it again. This is a dude that had a lot of almost Yoda-like wisdoms that would he would just kind of drop. Oh, he's a he's a there. Yoda analog he's a yoda clone oh man. completely completely ah. so this is definitely just one of those straightforward ones that he would have just dropped out you know mm-hmm. just thrown down so i can see him saying that very very easily i'll take uh, it i like great. it right yeah and and if, if not him then like yoda right yoda yeah, it would have been yoda no himself yeah 
mm-hmm. but but this one is this one's pretty straightforward so it's you know like i i, I could see any number of the the jedi mm-hmm. saying this stuff it's kind of a a jedi thing or even like a rex thing uh, I mean, t- to be fair, like it's such a straightforward saying. Easy isn't always simple. I could even even almost imagine like Palpatine, Palpatine or Padme or Leia or uh, Jin Erso. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Right. It's and anybody could be fucking saying this shit. Pick anybody a, that has yeah. pick a main character or a secondary character, and this is likely to to be able to come out of their mouth. Chewbacca could have said this at one point in time. Right. BB-8, you know. BB-8. Yeah. <laughs> chopper. <laughs> so. Yeah, and no, not Chopper. But Hera, oh. for sure. Hera, yeah. Actually, chopper, I, I feel like Chopper would be throwing this in, like, Ezra's face I at was, some point. I was going to say, bringing, a, bringing Rebels into this mix, I can totally see Kanan, like, Oh yeah, Kanan For would be sure. throwing this down. Kanan be all over this. Yeah, Kanan would be throwing this right into Ezra's face, mm-hmm. no question. So yeah, you know this is just again one of those. I think I've mentioned on one of my other rants where like I I like the fortune cookie as a sort of thing for children to just absorb. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is one of those that I just think would be really nice to. And I like to see whether or not the fortune cookie uh, kind of melds with the episode, and right. I try to force you to do that. And uh, <laughs> and this one, it does. It kind of does. I'm okay. kind of does. I'm okay with that. Right. So yeah. let's get to the um the the news the reel. Newsreel. Uh, fairly straightforward. It does drop a few nuggets of information, so um, it does. It's not an overview of the war per se, but it does talk about the war's effects, and starts with talking about the criminal underworld, which is interesting, mm-hmm. and how there's kind of this new economy that has been created for the uh, underworld, and they point out uh, ruthless mercenaries mm-hmm. that work with the separatists, right? Yep. So we get the uh, seeds of the story, which is that Anakin and Ahsoka are going to head into the Coruscant underground to find an arms dealer. Yeah. Do you mind if I read the uh, second half of this? Go for it. Okay. It says, now Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano descend into the treacherous gangster havens in an effort to find a corrupt and vile arms dealer who is buying weapons on the black market and selling them to the Republic's enemies. Okay. So you asked me. a long sentence. It is a long sentence. That's a Lorenzo length sentence. (laughs) Yeah. This, This whole thing is two sentences. No. Three sentences. The first paragraph is two sentences, and the right. second paragraph is one. Um, so you had asked me, you know, kind of what I thought of this three-week break, and here's what I think of it. Mm-hmm. The the newsreel is kind of generic mumbo-jumbo. Right. It's, it starts with, war creates opportunity for crim- for the criminal underworld, Ruthless mercenaries conspire with the separatists to disrupt and exploit the unstable situations within the within the Republic. Uh, the the little video montage during the first half is shit that happens in later episodes. I caught that too. And I definitely I did not like yeah. that at all. Yeah. Uh, and then like the second half that I read first about Anakin Ahsoka going down to like the underbelly. I was like, okay, it's presented as though we're continuing something that we've seen before. So I was like, did I forget something? Did I miss something? So I went back to, uh, I went back to the deserter and like watched the end of that. And I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, nope, definitely didn't miss anything there. And then what I did because this is production code 211, as mm-hmm. I found production code 210, which is Senate murders, which we're not going to talk about for another, uh, I don't know, like three months. 
Right. Uh, so it happened. Senate murders happens in the future, but as far as the production number goes, it was the one like right before this. It's two ten. Mm-hmm. This is two eleven. So I did not watch that entire episode because I don't like to do that. I want to keep the, these things like going in order. We're we're running through the story, right? But I did put it on and I watched like the last minute of that, mm-hmm. and it's got nothing to do with anything that this fucking newsreel is talking about. Like this newsreel just kind of like throws information out of the blue. This is just a new. This is a a story that they're just dropping on our laps and uh, doesn't. It implies that it's a continuation of something, but it's not. Like there I didn't was no get so- that though. Okay, I didn't. I didn't. You didn't feel that? Because I totally no. did. Like, I felt like this is telling me that, like, there was a setup to this thing, and this no. is where we're this is where we're going. And then I was like, okay, well, there was, like, this three-week gap. So I can totally understand people being confused because, like, the last thing you saw was three weeks ago, and it was Grievous Intrigue and The Deserter, you know, Grievous's being... Being or Grievous is pursuing Jedi, and then Grievous is being pursued, and then we hit this planet, and then we learn about this deserter, and then like later it's like, hey, this uh crazy shit's happening with all this criminal underworld shit, and uh, Anakin and Ahsoka have to go and and find out what's going on. I'm on this one. I'm gonna disagree with you wholly. I just okay because these three sentences are, to me, very self-contained. Yeah, the visuals get a little confusing because they're showing you shit from things we haven't seen yet right. at all. It, but it didn't bother me because it's just talking about... It's just B-roll for what the narration is saying. Right. Which is like, this war creates this new economy, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So the the fact that there was B-roll that I had never seen before didn't bother me because like that's just how B-roll works, you know? Right. Um, and because they weren't calling back to any specific event per se, right? So war, generally. I guess I felt like uh, because this, so this newsreel bleeds into Anakin and Ahsoka, uh, like in this kind of scummy part of town. The first thing that you see is they're like walking down the street, and Ahsoka looks over, and there's essentially like this drunk dude just like puking on the fucking corner. And mm-hmm. she has this disgusted look on her face. And then she and Anakin do like a walk and talk. And Anakin says that uh, uh, they're You're looking for Car Afa. Yes. He's an arms dealer. And Ahsoka's like, oh, well, who's he dealing arms to? Like, like what's going on? And Anakin says, you know, he's buying guns to sell them to the Separatist. And uh, they go to this club. So... I like all of this, like the newsreel and everything. Like it gives me the feeling that I don't know. It's just it's. I'm okay with that... jumping in like feet first to things, but this was from from where we came from to where we are. It felt like too big of a jump. I'll just leave it at that, and we can move forward. Right. So to me, uh, I I just like that this is this is a fresh episode. This is a a start of a new story, a new arc or whatever you want to call it. Right. Okay. And I dig that the newsreel is kind of doing what it's, it needs to do with setting up kind of what we're going to get ourselves into, which is dealing with criminal underworld now. So moving past the newsreel. Sure. With that said, I'm glad you brought up the start of this episode because the newsreel to me in three sentences was darn efficient it kind of bothered me that then we had this walk and talk to explain more of what we we're doing here in the slums of coruscant okay because it's one of those things where like from a storytelling standpoint it makes sense where they are speaking aloud so that we as an audience can understand that they're searching for car off but then from a logical standpoint of two people who are working together why did she not ask this on the way to the slums of coruscant like wouldn't there have been a briefing why weren't they standing around that circle hologram pad with like a map of 
Coruscant. Yeah, like lower level Coruscant. I think right? we I think we have the same complaint, but from kind of different angles. Like I just kinda, pointed at a different spot. <laughs> right. I kind of feel. I totally wish that the that the newsreel would have been like. Grievous has been captured, and now a new threat. Blah, 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 blah. Anakin and Ahsoka are looking for Karafa, this dude that's doing this fucking thing, and then drop you down there, and the and Ahsoka is just like, hey, that guy's puking on the corner. Which specific place are we going to? And then Anakin drops the line of, Intel says he's here. Boom. Right, right, right. Done. So I wouldn't have a problem. Well, my thing is, I don't. Grievous has nothing to do with this story, so I don't need to hear it. Right? So. Um, I understand that, but I'm saying during the newsreel, it's often, this is what happened, this is what is happening. Right. That's all I was saying. And so the, here's what happened is the situation the war has created. Okay. Right, so that's what the news wheel is pr- news reel is presenting. Here's what hap- is happening: is it sets it up. I just would have liked the one extra sentence, as you said, to kind of move this car off of information into the news reel, mm-hmm. so that we don't have this awkward exchange between Ahsoka and Anakin. The f- but I, like I said, that grievous story is done. That all of that business is done. I I don't I don't need a recap if it has nothing. To do with this episode so kind of like what i complained about i think i complained about it on air in the recording about my desperate housewife analogy i do remember you bringing up desperate housewives yes. right so yeah so like i if if grievous has nothing to do with this episode i don't you know it, it would just be a distraction and be like yeah we well you know grievous escaped again like oh okay who who the fuck cares like is that is that important to this episode? Yeah. No, then no. <laughs> like okay, it'd be like a recap of Desperate Housewives that like is twenty minutes long. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like by the way, this happened over here on this part of Wisteria Lane, and then over here we also got this husband who's cheating on this wife. Okay, well does does that does that have to do with this episode? Well, no, but there's also the daughter who's having a drinking problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't remember the drinking problem, but but you yeah. So so the just that that's kind of the last thing I'll say about that, so that we can kind of actually get into this episode proper, right? Hey, we're yeah. we're thirty that's seconds our, into yeah. this thing, man. Right, 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 right. So as you had mentioned, they're in the the lower levels of Coruscant. They're searching for Karafa. Um, they get to a building where. Uh, they know Karafa's hiding. Mm-hmm. Anakin tells Ahsoka to wait outside. Yep. Um, sh- he tells her to stay out there in case he tries to escape, and she's just like, okay. Like, she just begrudgingly does it. Um, she says, just like always. Right. So he goes in. There's a commotion inside the bar. We can't see it, but then the, the door opens up, and all the patrons come running out. Um, Ahsoka kind of gets bumped in by all of these patrons and like even goes down to the ground at some point and as she's getting back up she notices her lightsaber has gone missing um yeah she's she, she gets knocked on her butt mm-hmm. and then gives a a, a harump and <laughs> then notices her lightsaber's gone and then looks back over her shoulder mm-hmm. and definitely and she, locates the thief Right, yeah, so she sees her lightsaber in the hands of a thief. They make eye contact, even. Uh, But then Anakin comes out with Karafa. Karafa has been captured. That part of the story is done. Yep. Um, This is kind of why I... I, done. We we don't... This is why I do suspect that we don't get this in the newsreel, because it's just a quick little aside thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But nonetheless... uh, Ahsoka for a second is concerned. Anakin senses it, but Ahsoka hides any issue from Anakin. They head back to the Jedi Temple, um, and Ahsoka excuses herself and asks for permission to head to the archives. Yep. And 
Anakin's like, sure, great. I can handle Car Offa by myself. We're all good. And as you said, we never really see him again. Yeah. He says, all. he says, cheers to you. I don't need to be in this episode anymore. Adios. Yep. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so she heads into the uh, archive and she's digging through the database. Uh, Jocasta is helping her out. And they're kind of just like doing a broad Google searches of like, criminals in a certain area yeah i kind of imagine that she went uh she went to the archives because she has had interaction with jocasta before when she got like reprimanded for i don't even remember what she got reprimanded for but it was the it was the episode that we met cad bane um, yeah she wasn't following Crown orders Heist. yeah she wasn't following orders yeah right so uh she got put on uh, like archive duty arrest? or right, something. Yeah. So she got to hang out with Jacos New for a little bit. So I feel like uh, she goes to the archives, not actually for research, but more for advice because mm-hmm. she can talk to Jocasta and say, Hey, I lost my lightsaber. Anakin's going to fucking kill me. You know, can you help me out? This is where I was. Well, I don't even know where to look. You're old as fuck. And maybe this has happened to you before or, You've talked to some other Padawans, like, can I get some advice here? Yeah. And so Jocasta's and that makes like, sense. yeah, let's use the card catalog and, um, you know, we'll do To some... no luck. Yeah. To, so to no luck do they get any information. Yep. And Jocasta New does have a suggestion, which I did find great humor in this little moment here, where... She's like, I, this is not my area of expertise, but I know who could help you. And it's this guy right over here. And she literally points at a guy who is like 10 feet to their left <laughs> or something. Yep. And like the next row of desks or computers or tables or whatever. Right. Next like, row over. I don't even think he was at like a data bank. I Like he literally was just at a table, I think, or something. No, desk, he's at, like a lo- he's at if, uh, whatever you want to call uh, a terminal. Okay, so there was some something in front of him. Because there's there's like another joke where uh, he's asleep. Like right. Ahsoka's like, he looks like he's asleep. And Jocasta's like, he probably is. Uh, he doesn't <laughs> get many people that come and talk to him. So, uh, and what does she say? Uh, he's a Jedi elder. He She basically says he's super old. But right. he's an expert on Coruscant crime world. Mm-hmm. And so Ahsoka wakes him up. And then he's all like super happy. Like, oh, hey, a uh, young person that wants to talk to my old bitch ass. Right. And uh, Ahsoka does ask him for help. She's polite. Mm-hmm. And he says, okay, what are we doing? And then he starts looking on the computer. So he was totally yeah. oh, that's just right. asleep at his little crime world. Uh data bank right that that is correct uh so ahsoka gives him all the information that she knows where they're at what he looked like and she kind of mentions he was a fishy sort of character she said (laughs) well she says he's from one of those water or one of those aqua worlds you know like a water planet and he says Oh, so you say there's something fishy about him? <laughs> I thought it was great. It was a Oh, I loved it. Yeah, th- like look, this weird like double entendre dad humor is my thing, right? Uh this is this is like Jungle Cruise humor. Mm-hmm. This is absolutely up my alley. Uh the lamer the better in some of this sort of wordplay stuff. Um and also because of it's it's also like Ahsoka's reaction where she just does not know what to do with this character. Yep. She's just like, okay, I mean, he's helping. And within like seconds, he narrows it down to six people. Uh, yeah. He does a little and, bit of clicking around and then he's like, uh, oh, there's a, he calls the dude a fish guy he's like oh, there's a fish guy like well okay right. hey uh, who is it here comes up with a photo array and she's like it's that one right there right 
Easy as that. Uh, so, did we mention the name of the Jedi, by the way? is uh, Yeah, the Terra Sanube. Uh, so, Terra Sanube is the old mm-hmm. guy. And so, Terra pulls up a picture, and Ahsoka points at it. Yep. And it's a patrolian named uh, Banamu? Banamu. 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 So... She's like, great, I'll go get him. Uh, and she starts to head off, and he kind of stops her and is like, hey, wait, why don't you slow down there, partner? Uh, She's trying to, like, GTFO, and he's like, hey, calm your jets. I helped you find right. this guy. And like he slow says, and steady. He says to her, oh, because she's like, oh, thank you so much. If there's anything I can ever do for you, as she's like, Trying to walk she's away. already she's turned around over her shoulder, and he goes, "Actually, right. there is. I haven't had a mission, an assignment, an assignment in ages." <laughs> so he right. picks up his cane, and I'm like, "Okay, this is, uh, this is Beak Dog Yoda guy is what this right. guy is." Yeah, so he's a taller fellow. He's not small and diminutive like Yoda. Oh, he's uh, tall. Oh, yeah, he's very tall. He's taller than Ahsoka by far, for sure. Um, but yeah, he's got this slow and steady pace as he's just following and uh, right behind Ahsoka. And Ahsoka's like, "Oh, uh, okay, sure, please. Yeah, we can, we can come." Uh, we cut to them back in the lower levels of Coruscant again. They got there very fast. Yeah, very quickly. Uh, I don't know if they took transport, uh, public lift. I don't, you know bus system uh but they get to a like a sh- a shop storefront of some sort like a looks like a uh, sort of like a food booth situation or something yeah what did i call this i called this the the alley side soup dispensary i think is what i right call it. like it looked like like uh if you were in japan it'd be like a noodle stand mm-hmm. sort of thing right and i like call um, it like a soup soup eatery because there's you see a an Ithorian there and the proprietor like gives him a bowl of soup so I figure that right. this is the place that sells soup right so there's a little interaction where Ahsoka just basically point blank is like hey I'm looking for a lightsaber yep. are you selling lightsabers and the guy without looking at an eye just leans in and is like yeah I can I can help you with that. Uh, so he leaves the booth. They meet at the side of the food booth uh, thing. There's another character there. They get in this like little interaction, and they these two uh, potential proprietors of a lightsaber find out that they are in fact talking to Jedi. And Ahsoka's like, "Well, like it's my lightsaber that I'm trying to get back. So you can either help me or." whatever like she's not really threatening him but um there's just a a a a heavy conversation going back and forth um banamu does get brought up so the the two guys kind of know that there's nothing they they can really do to stop this and they'd rather just let her go in her way rather than cause more trouble for themselves yeah, she's so, pretty aggressive in in this in this deal, and um, Sanube is kind of just shaking his head, but he's letting her kind of fail, right? Gracefully, I guess you yes. would say, because there is an offer to like sell this lightsaber for twenty thousand credits, and she's like, "No, you're gonna give it to me because it's mine." Right? And they're like, "What are you talking about?" And then she's like, "You got it from this guy." And shows like a hollow of uh, Banamu, Banamu, and the and then that's when when Sanube interjects and he's like, "Hey, everybody, calm down here. This is right. what's going on." So, uh, so Sanube, go ahead. I'm gonna pull a Lorenzo here, and it annoyed me that these two characters that we're just calling proprietors, like. They have no names. They've got no no. There's nothing. no info on them. Nope, yeah. nothing. Like they seem yeah. like oh, this is these are the people that are going to give information, and then there's like nothing, and they just like cower in the corner, and they're like, okay, go over here, go to. I'm 
I am glad you stopped because this this is kind of a there is a moment that is worthwhile, but it's not worth the five other steps it takes to get here. Uh huh. Um, it's definitely like a weird step in the story. It doesn't destroy the story. It doesn't stop the story. Dennis tracks. It's just one of these like in hindsight there wasn't anything there's information that is gained by the scene but there are so many other ways we could have gone about this yeah so i agree with I, you yeah all the way cuz so here's the information that we are now privy to after this scene is that uh banamu's hideout is at the spider arms hostel correct and that he lives there with his girlfriend correct that's all we get. That's that's what we got out of this. Just Correct. a location on this guy. Uh, so they they both are uh, uh, they being Ahsoka and uh, Sinube head to the hostel. Um, again, there's kind of like this weird little moment. I, I, there's definitely some time filling moments here, where they head in. There's a uh, front desk clerk for the hostel, and Ahsoka and uh, Tara head in and the front desk person's like, Hey, like, how can I help you? You guys need to know where you're going. They're both just like, Nope, we're good. And they just keep walking straight into a hallway. Yeah. Sanube just uses the Jedi mind trick on him. And he's like, we're, we know where we're going. And he's like, you know where you're set. going. Right. So they're walking in a hallway and Ahsoka immediately is like, how are we going to find him? There's a bunch of rooms here. And, there, I like this. This is a good moment. I did enjoy this moment coming up where uh, Ahsoka's like freaking out. She's she doesn't know how she's gonna find uh, this uh, Banamu in this hostel. And Tara is like, "Yo, just why don't you slow down? Mm-hmm. S- stop thinking for a goddamn second. Because when you stop talking, when you stop thinking, uh, he says." be quiet i think yeah. is his exact word he says but. you need to be quiet and then ahsoka says essentially says okay and he says not quiet with your mouth but quiet with your mind you're so anxious right. to find the pickpocket that your worry is equal to his and she says so if i relax i can sense his anxiety and he says yes if you relax you realize he's in this room so right. he's been he's been on the trail the whole time, but he's also able to, to, I guess lecture her, and calm her down because she's like amped up this whole time. She's like, I lost right. my my lightsabers lost my lightsabers lost like, fuck 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 I gotta find it, and he's like, chill out like you're, like we're we're on the trail like, yeah go back to your Jedi training and don't just right. go berserk because. You're missing an item. And what I like about this scene, too, <coughs> is that in his lesson, you have to realize, too, that he's trying to, like, block her bullshit <laughs> anxiety uh-huh. that has to be setting off whatever radar he's using to find Manamu. Right. Right. So I, I, I really liked that he's kind of juggling all of these balls in the air. Uh huh. And he's doing it super gracefully. Absolutely, like and flawlessly. Super accurately, yeah, and accurately, yeah. Because the uh, this and then the the next moment kind of spoils it for me just a little bit because Ahsoka's like, oh, it's this door, and then immediately like, force slams the door in, like breaks the door, not just fucking down, like it throws across the apartment. Yep. Um, she done she done cleared out an area behind that door to right. the back wall of whatever is the, however far away the back wall is from that door. Yeah. Like there could have been a kid behind there that would have just been smushed and murdered. Like Her lightsaber could have been back there and it would have been right. smashed. Yeah. So like I don't know why that level of force was necessary. It wasn't. Um but anyways, so they get in in this in this uh a part hostel room. I don't know what to call it. Um, into the living quarters, I guess. Uh, hotel room. I don't know. Right. Dwelling. So they, 
Yeah, so they find Banamu, who himself is definitely freaked out. And there's like a small back and forth. Again, there's just like a there's a lot of random stuff happening. Um, Ahsoka is getting very aggressive and like force throws Banamu against a wall, right? Yeah, she threatens him. She um, borderline tortures him. Mm-hmm. And there's she is kind of course corrected in her behavior one time by Sunube. Yeah. Uh, and that's when she's like being threatening. Like he's like, Hey, calm down. Like right. you're a Jedi. And she's, she's calm for a bit. And then she super escalates. And like you said, she throws him against the wall and eventually she gets the info out of him. Uh, is it just me or did this guy sound like an Italian Watto? impersonator yes yeah i got i definitely got that we definitely i definitely felt the uh the small tinges of that stereotypical it's a me mario <laughs> it's a me a wato I'm right a gonna, that's, i'm gonna betray you yeah that's definitely what i got here yeah um you know it's it, the the voice yeah so it wasn't that high level accent of it it was definitely like a more it's a more subdued kind of accent yeah you know? right like i am a sorry i don't have your lightsaber so i already sold it right so yeah that's the information we get again we're going this this we're we're on a pretty good uh trail here right uh so the lightsaber has been sold but namu doesn't actually have it nope but he, he but he does give it out a name mm-hmm. so we get the and name the location Name and location of a a knack movers has it. Mm -hmm. Um, So she and uh, Tara Sunube, they leave uh, Banamu B and they head to knack movers apartment. Um, And when they get there, knack movers is dead. He dead. Dunzo. Definitely dead. They, Kind of take a quick look around the apartment, and his girlfriend pops her head out from behind somewhere. Um, okay, we need to. We do need to talk about one thing. When they're on the way there, uh, Sunube is talking to Ahsoka, and like Ahsoka's all like, "We need to hurry. We need to hurry." Like she's she's full gung ho, moving forward, moving forward, and Sunube mm-hmm. is like. We're going to get there. Like, I understand. And then he explains to the audience and kind of to Ahsoka, like, what her motivation of, um, like, this desire to get shit done right now. And he's like, Mm -hmm. I understand. You feel like should any harm come from your lightsaber, Mm -hmm. you would feel responsible. Right. Uh, And you would feel the guilt of the hurt that it causes to others. And she doesn't really say anything. And he's like, this is a valid concern, but this is something that you have to figure out. So he's putting it back on her. And I thought that was nice because it's like, it's like, Hey, you lost your lightsaber and you have this, you have this, this thing that's itching at you. Like you need to find it because you're worried that something bad is going to happen with the lightsaber and you're going to be to blame. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, yep. I mean, that's, That's legit. Valid. Yeah. And she kind of looks at him for advice and he's like, nope, you need to yeah. figure this one out. Deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. a total, it, it, it's a different way of, it's a different method of delivery, but it's the same message of this lightsaber is your life. Don't lose it. Like respect mm-hmm. it. Right. Keep it. Be aware of it. This well, is bigger like, than. Because now we get, like, consequences. Like, Sunube is bringing up potential consequences, right? Mm-hmm. And not, like, consequences, like, being reprimanded by the temple, but, like, real-life harm that can be done. Right. Like, you purchased a handgun and uh, keep it loaded underneath your pillow, and your right. kid found it and shot the fucking neighbor. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, the... 
very timely <laughs> like, again be responsible with things right especially when it's a lightsaber or a blaster or in the real world some type of firearm or whatever right exactly so this yeah the the analogies that at, at play here the 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 illusions that can be made to real world examples i think uh mm-hmm. you know ev- even outside of the very as of this recording current news that mm-hmm. is happening you know there there's still as you pointed out there's there, i appreciate when we can kind of from a child level mm-hmm. st- have an entertaining episode that's still kind of like, hey, don't be a dick hole, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like right. And there's actually uh, there's a line that we that we didn't bring up with uh, Banamu, and when Ahsoka is like, hey, where's my fucking lightsaber? He goes, that thing. I nearly killed myself with it. I got rid of that as quick as I could because right in in this time period in the Republic. Uh, Jedi are public figures, right? Mm -hmm. At least they're presumed to be, and that's kind of questionable when you look at like the sequel trilogy because it's, you know, we're we're talking one generation, and they're like myths and legends, and people don't really know whether or not it's true. But the way that these stories are presented, like people know who the Jedi are, they know what lightsabers are. So if somebody found, if a kid found a lightsaber, they'd be like, "Wow, this is so cool!" and like hit the button and if they happen to have a point at their face their head's gone right exactly and i think this is also something that um sanube is talking about like like not only it it being stolen but if you're careless with it bad things can happen you need to figure this out yeah like there's a yeah like i said there's a strong emphasis on actions leading to consequences good and bad yep so I I very much appreciate this point, and this is a thread throughout the episode that I did enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, so moving on to yeah, once where again, we are, once again, Sanube points out here's the door we're looking for, and yep. Ahsoka uh, opens. The it. one thing I kind of jumped over is that the door had a lock on it that had been cut open. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, so when they get up to the door. Of Knack Mover's apartment, the lock is cut, and then that's when they go in and they notice that Knack is definitely dead. So there's some sort of intrusion here, right? Yep. So Over's- it wasn't like, yeah, Knack didn't just have a heart attack and die. Uh, there's some sort of suspicious activity. Um, then, as I mentioned, some lady comes out of nowhere and is crying. Mm-hmm. And... Um, she asks if uh, all the other men have gone, the men who have killed movers. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, like as of right now, it's just us. So and Ahsoka, she, also, she also claims that she came home and found him dead on the floor. Right. Yes. So she had yet to talk to anybody else. She was just in shock, apparently. Right. Yeah. Ahsoka definitely questions her like, did you contact the security patrol? Right. Like, you didn't do anything. Mm. And, uh, and she's just like, nope, I, I'm just in so much shock. I don't know what to do. Yeah, she said, well, then why are you hiding? Right. And she, said, like, she was well, concerned she said, that the well, men was... were there or something like that, right? She said, I was afraid. Right. And then Sanube has this real awkward, like, wave to Ahsoka to like, hey, come here. Right. Uh, it's not discreet. It's just plain awkward. Like, hey, Ahsoka, let's go talk in private right over here. <laughs> right. Let's. But he doesn't move, and he's like right behind Ahsoka, and Ahsoka is like right. right in front of this pink lady whose name that we will find out. We will learn, yeah. And uh, so Ahsoka turns around, and then they have a little conversation, right? Sanube says, she seems terrified, but I sense something else. You probably need to go search the other rooms. So mm-hmm. that's what Ahsoka does. Yep, she goes to search uh, one of the bedrooms uh, where she pretty quickly gets attacked. She gets uh, attacked. By another lady. 
Uh, she gets attacked by another lady who, uh, at first glance, she has a interesting face features, I guess. Uh -huh. I don't know how else to describe it. So at first, I thought she was a droid. Okay. Honestly. Uh, and then later on, I found out she's not a droid. But she has, like, it's because she had, like, this weird line on her jaw. So do you know what this is? No. She is wearing a mask that Ew. is made out of bone. So the line on her jaw there is, we a, go. is a soft hinge, hinge because it's like you can see there's like three stitchings on either side. Yes, I noticed that. To keep the top that. piece, you know, like the, the top skull to the mandible. Yeah. Uh, presumably so that she can actually move her mouth and talk. Uh, yeah. But it is a mask, and this isn't – you don't learn that this is a mask in this episode. Uh, where did I find this out? Yeah, in we definitely my, learn. Go ahead. I, I looked her up in my handy dandy Star Wars: The Clone Wars character encyclopedia, and it's got uh, it'll have like a picture of the character, and then there's like one or two little thought bubbles, if you will, that like mm -hmm. have an arrow that points to some something on the character, and it's like a little brief description, and like it says mask made of, of bone hides true features. Yeah, we do Which, get a species call out on her. Um, yeah, I don't like the species. It's weird. I don't know why. Uh, I don't like it. We'll we'll get to that. Let's let's. So, yeah. yeah so uh, I'm glad you described what we see because it was at first glance it was just super confusing to me. Mm -hmm. Um, from that's, a visual standpoint, that's why she looks weird. She's actually like a teal skinned person, but she has this white mask on and like the the bone mask goes all the way up over her head so it's like it's okay, like yeah. hel full helmet style but that's why she's got like the teal around her eyes and and the and, weird line at the at the mouth yeah that's and in no in no way does it read that nope. way from a visual standpoint because honestly like the three stitches again with the time that we are recording this it's you know we're getting into late fall so i'm like it like it, it, it kind of Along with what you said, like it reminded me of like the Nightmare Before Christmas sort of thing, right? Like, yep. So it is a Jack Skellington esque sort of feature. And uh, Jack Skellington's girlfriend's name is like Sally, right? Sally, she yeah. Has, she is stitched. She has stitches, yeah. Yes. So that's why I thought Nightmare Before Christmas, because like the, we had this like weird stitching going on. So I'm like, is she a weird genetic creation thing? I don't. I, how do we have a Sally in this universe, right? Like, she does look. Um, a, she looks like a, a cross between Sally and Mila Jovovich from The Fifth Element. Yep. And like you smash those two together, and you make the skin kind of tealish. There you right. Go. And yeah. And she has like the weirdest damn haircut too, which didn't help me trying to figure out what I was looking at. But anyways, so. Back to what happens. Um, mm -hmm. This lady does, in fact, have Ahsoka's lightsaber. Mm -hmm. And while still in the apartment, she's trying to ignite it, but she can't get it going. She's like, okay, I'm, how do you how, make this thing how work? How do I use this thing? Right. Uh, so Ahsoka kind of gets into fisticuffs with this lady. Uh, and she says, hey, my lightsaber. Mm -hmm. And then so the lady's like, oh, you're a Jedi? What? Uh, freaks out jumps out through the window mm -hmm. and jumps across buildings like crouching tiger hidden dragon style. Yeah. Because Ahsoka follows her, right? Yeah. So Ahsoka out jumps out as well. Yeah. Jumps out as well. They start having a foot chase across the rooftops of lower Coruscant, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's weird because when they jump from like a building to a roof, the roof is lower from where they're jumping from. For the most part. Always. Yeah. So we have, um, we got good old classic Clone Wars plot A, plot B here. Mm -hmm. And plot A is Ahsoka chasing this, uh, this bone skull mask wearing person. Right. And then Pink Lady and Tara Sanube. Yep. That's plot A, plot B. Um, so as this, uh, lady with lightsaber gives chase for Ahsoka, mm -hmm. 
when we cut back to Sinube with Lady, we do get an introduction, I believe, from Lady, who s- does tell her name. She, she says her name at some point. I, I kind of She does say exactly. her name at some point. I think he yeah. asked her, like, who are you? Right. And she says, and I'm Ione Marcy. Marcy, yeah. So we get that much out of her. Um, and then cutting back to Ahsoka, mm-hmm. uh, she mentions that she's chasing a uh where am i a Torellian Django jumper i don't like this name i don't either i don't, I don't like the species i don't know what that really like a Torellian Ter- is fine Torellian is fine a Torellian is jumper? a person from Torellia which yeah. is uh can we just drop this this girl's name out here yeah let's throw it yeah. i don't remember is she named out loud I don't remember, but uh, her name is Ioni. Does say just the first name, Cassie. And the sh- yeah, we get a Cassie out of her. Cassie Cryar, yeah. Who is this Torellian Django jumper? Cassie's homeworld is Torellia, which totally makes sense that she would be yep. Torellian. But I don't know Dang. where this Django jumper things <laughs> thing comes from. One, yeah. the fact that. This girl is described as a bounty hunter, which she is. Mm-hmm. Uh, not in the episode, but in her bio. And that Django Fett is a bounty hunter. But then, like, two, I think that the reason that they put Jumper on here is because she is really good at jumping. Like, she's as good at jumping as Ahsoka is at, like, force jumping. So uh-huh. it's like, I feel like this is like a like a note after the fact that's like well right. so is this person a jedi too because like she's really good at jumping like no like she's just like she can jump so so what is she again she's trillion so she's like a trillion jumper then right <laughs> i mean i guess so yep She's a Trellian jumper. We're going to go with that. And uh, what's this thing with her trying to steal the lightsaber? Like, do all this other stuff? Like, okay. She's, you know, she's like a bounty hunter. Like, uh, you mean like Django? Okay, fine. Like Django. Oh, so she's like a Trellian Django jumper? It's. Yeah. It's dumb. Just. Yeah, I completely agree. I 100%. I. And just the fact that, like, while chasing this lady, Ahsoka is yelling into her comms back to Sinube, this fucking mouthful of a species name. Like. Yeah. It's a good thing that uh, she wasn't, like, a, I don't know. I don't know how you can tell the difference between a Torellian Django jumper and, uh, like, a. Torellian Yoda Leaper or something. Right. Or yeah. I got yeah. I yeah. It's just this whole thing is weird. And the chase is weird too, because they just keep going from rooftop rooftop to rooftop. To ledge to rooftop to a to ledge. ledge to Yeah. And so that is happening, and then back to our plot B with Sunube. Um Sunube keeps kind of just asking questions under the guise of like Mm-hmm. normal empathy right like so how long have you guys been dating how did you find him um but then he kind of sneaks in these like other points where he's like well it's really interesting that you said that men killed mm-hmm. knack movers but my associate found a woman hiding in the other room and that's who she's chasing right now so this is what you do as a parent Mm-hmm. When you think your kid's being misleading. Right. And you're like, so, you guys went to the went to the park the other day? Yeah, totally. Cool. Uh, which park did you go to again? Uh, you know, this one. Yeah, what time was that? What time were you guys there? Uh, 2 o'clock. Man, that's crazy, because I was there from like 1.45, 2.15. I didn't see anybody. Oh, yeah, we went to this other park. Right. (laughs) You know, that's what you do. 
Definitely, you yeah. Figure it out. You narrow things down. You figure yeah. it out. Either people are telling the truth or they're not. Well, uh, you let them expose their own lies, essentially, right? Right. So, uh, <laughs> we could call that a Jim Acosta now, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, so, um, I did like the Sinube plot thread because of. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna call it. I really like Sunube. I really okay. enjoyed his character because at the same time he's fucking doing this shit with her mm-hmm. and kind of just letting her spew out her own bullshit. He kind of sits down next to her and slaps a uh, little tracker on her shoulder. Oh yeah, he totally did that. Absolutely. So I, he's I like love how smooth in the guise he was. Of- in the guise of consoling like, her, he puts right. his like, arm around here, her here. and is just like, boop, and drops right. the tracker on her shoulder. <laughs> right. And I'm going to tell you, like, I had liked him up to this point, and this was the moment where I'm like, that's fucking badass, dude. Like, <laughs> I do have a question for you. Yeah. What do you, what do you make out of this? Uh, it's a scene that happens a little bit earlier. Um, this pink lady is nervous, right? And so mm-hmm. she goes to grab a drink of water. And Sanube is like, "What you doing over there?" And she's like, "Oh, I, I'm just, just taking a drink." And you can see that she's like Michael J. Fox with this glass of water, like oh, shaking yeah. as she takes a sip. Yeah. And uh, Sanube <laughs> says, "Oh, maybe, maybe we should check this your your dead boyfriend over here for poison because." Looks to me like he was poisoned. He was probably poisoned. And then, like, she gets this look in her face like, oh, fuck, maybe I shouldn't have drank the water. But right. presumably, she would know how he was killed. Right. So, so, this little nervous nervous thing, reaction that she has, is it for show? Because it's not for him. Like, he's not even... From a story standpoint, it's definitely a red herring. Okay. <coughs> so... Okay. I'm looking at it as like a again, if a child was watching this, um, you know, a kid's just taking it at face value. From her standpoint, I don't think it's for show. I think she's genuinely nervous with these Jedi here. And the fact that he brings up the poison, she is thinking that she will be caught very quickly. So how do you think that Knack Movers was killed? Do you think it was via poison? Possibly, but I have no evidence either way to back up how he was killed. So I was just thinking right now, like, uh, he would have either been killed by, like, blaster, Mm -hmm. lightsaber, or other, right? And so since Sinube is like, oh, maybe he was killed by poison, that leads me to believe that... He doesn't have a fucking blaster hole through him, and mm-hmm. he's not smoking or cut in half from a lightsaber. So, right. I this I think what is happening here is that Sanube is saying this guy was poisoned, and I think you poisoned him. Right. Like, and so that she's like, oh shit, like he knows, and that's the nervousness. Right. Not that's because, exactly what I see. Yeah. Not because the. The, the beverage that she is consuming could potentially be poison, but that he knows that. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. Exactly what I, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. So, cool. Um, the fact that she stops drinking the water after he mentions it, that, that's the red herring I'm saying for, for, for a child who might not have seen many mysteries or whatever, you know. Okay. It's just one of those storytelling devices that I think works well if used well um so like yeah you know like sometimes it's obvious i'm like they're they're uh my my rule is if you don't see them die on screen they're not actually dead hey Uh, that's my rule with uh all of the clones and the droids right yeah so you know like scream three the first shitty x-men origins will rain movie you know there's a lot of dead people coming back from the dead because you never officially saw them die on screen. I'm like, yeah, they're not fucking dead. So, 
Um, the best red herring ever in a fucking movie is uh, 22 Jump Street when they suspect uh, one of Jonah Hill's friends has been selling drugs, but he has a tattoo on his arm because the high school he went to is the Red Herrings. <laughs> mm. So that is the best red herring I've ever seen in a fucking movie ever. <laughs> so, um, But yeah. So anyways, moving on. Chase is still going on, right? Uh, yeah, this is the part see. where, um, like, when it cuts back to Ahsoka, she's on a ledge that is smaller than the size of her feet, which mm-hmm. I imagine that her feet are quite small. Right. And she's shuffling, and somehow they get to jumping on, uh, they look like just these big floating engine things. Right. Uh, when like they're giant when floating Mario pill tubes, like, <laughs> well, when we're able to pan back from it, because, uh, Cassie like jumps onto the first one. So mm. jumps on the first one. Cassie jumps onto the second one. She like swipes it with her lightsaber as Ahsoka's is jumping onto it. And what they are is like big floating billboards. Yeah. We saw these, we saw these giant TV screens essentially, uh, back in, the Zillow B strikes back with, mm-hmm. uh, with guest Ryan Hopp from Science Sort of, and um, that's what these are, right? They're floating, yep. I guess, above the traffic lanes or whatever. So, the there's three of them. The mm-hmm. one that's closest to the building is an advertisement for Star Tours. Nice. Um, uh, let me think of what the verbiage is. It is Star Tours Glee Anselm, which is a name that we've heard before. That's back from Children of the Force. I honestly don't it's recall. It's a name of a city or a planet, if I remember correctly. And then it's a, it says call 1-800-555-6576 now. The hmm. second one, the middle advertisement, kind of looks similar to like a Coca Cola can, like the mm-hmm. red with the like the silver swirl, not swirl, but like I don't know what you call it, like that, like a little swish. The, yeah, it's like a double swish that like overlaps. Mm-hmm. It says soda, Very and nice. then the third one is. A, like a PSA announcement by Chancellor Palpatine. Yeah. So that's the one. Uh, like what happens is they're both able to jump on the first one. And then Cassie jumps on the second one and like slices it. So I guess she cuts like whatever is making this thing float. Float. Yeah. Like there's right. some sort the of anti-gravity system, whatever it is. Right. Ahsoka is able to jump on that and then... Uh, Cassie does the same thing to, or maybe she like cuts the first one and then she cuts the second one also. And the second one like completely falls. Anyway, Ahsoka in this series of jumping from one thing to the next misses one of them. Mm -hmm. And somehow she like slides down this screen that Chancellor Palpatine's given this PSA on. And I don't. I meant to take some notes on it because I felt like whatever he was talking about was kind of funny uh, slash not relevant to this, but yeah. relevant to something else that we have seen. And she's able to like slow herself down as though it's an actual like screen, like, like, a yeah, I didn't understand what's happening either. Yeah. She was getting like some Spider-Man, like, sp- like powers essentially. She totally does. Yeah. So she's just kind of stuck on the screen. Uh-huh. Um, but then, yeah, so back to plot B. This is about when Sunube, uh basically fully accuses uh, Ioni of killing uh, Knack Movers. Yeah, he's straight up giving her the third degree. Yeah, so she freaks out and jumps out onto the balcony and into an airspeeder, which she had called to come nearby or something like that right 
Yeah, she uses, like, a wrist communicator. She uses, like, her eye wash to be, like, yo, eye car, like, uh, park over here. Right. And, like, remote start that shit, essentially. Uh-huh. So, she jumps in an airspeeder right as a, a few uh, droids, like, guardian police droids, I believe they are called. Yeah, I think they're police droids or, like, security droids or something like that. Yeah. So they come to try and get her, but she jumps on that airspeeder and escapes. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so then Ahsoka and Cassie end up on the top of a building. And Cassie's like climbing up a pipe that Ahsoka then bends out to hang out over the traffic that's flying through Coruscant, right? Yeah, so Ioni calls Cassie and she's like, hey, they know I'm involved. Fuck. And this is when we hear Cassie's name, by the way. Yes. So Ioni is like, Cassie, come, uh, uh, like, or they found us, they found out we're involved, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, like, where are you? And then Cassie's like, yo, I'm going to need a pickup if you're, if you're driving. <laughs> yeah. So what I like, the way that I read this is that Cassie is like climbing like a downspout, like an outside gutter that yep. you see in movies where fucking spies like climb gutters or something yeah and uh ahsoka she doesn't cut it like she she no she force bends it or something i thought she like karate chopped it or something no she Uh, uses the force to like bend it over uh uh-huh so then it drops from being vertical it drops to horizontal Mm -hmm. and then it's like a long uh, it's like a super long flagpole tube type deal, right? That you see in old cartoons where, uh, where flagpoles work like springboards and or mm-hmm. diving boards. Yep. This is what she has created. So she kind of runs out there, tippy toes out there to collect Cassie, and uh, Cassie spoils her fun by using this thing as a springboard to escape to somewhere else. Which is uh, right into the airspeeder that Ioni is driving. Right into the airspeeder. So they they drive off and escape. Uh, some time passes. Not much, but some time passes. Because Ahsoka is definitely sitting on the top of the building, very defeated. Yeah, I said she's like sulking in the corner. Like Basically. She's sad when, when the bad girls get away. And then the next thing you see, she's like sitting there hunched over like... Knees tucked up to her chest, like, holding herself. And uh, then our good old buddy, Sanube, pulls up on a speeder. Yep. Go ahead. And, uh, yeah, yeah. so uh, Ahsoka hops on is like, where'd you get the speeder? And he's like, don't worry about that, but we're going to start driving off. And he's a very slow driver. Uh, yeah. A lot of traffic is passing by him. Which My I- note. My note says they speed off in quotation right. marks because uh, they're they're not speeding. They're, yeah, they're moving. Know. Yeah, but they're uh. just at a like, leisurely Sunday drive pace. Um, as they're driving, Ahsoka asks Sanube where they're headed to, and Sanube responds that they're headed to the train station. Mm-hmm. Why the train station? Well, because Sanube is following the tracker that he had placed on uh, Ioni. Did I not tell you that? Right. And she says, no, not at all. When did you do that? So they head uh, into the train station. Um, Cassie notices the tracker on the back of Ioni's shoulder uh, and takes it off and crushes it. Ahsoka and Sinube are already kind of nearby. So as the tracker dies on their end, Ahsoka freaks out and starts running through the platform, spots the two of them, calls out for them to be stopped. There are a bunch of these police droids around them there, too. So some of the droids grab onto Ione, and some grab onto Cassie. Cassie has the lightsaber and then ignites it and slices herself uh, and escapes. Ione, however, is still captured. So Ahsoka runs after uh cassie I, I keep forgetting which one's which so that's why there's always a pause there nope, ahsoka runs after cassie and 
So we continue another chase. Another chase happens. Yay! More chases. Yeah, more chasing. So this one uh, ends up on a train. Yeah, they are Cassie. On top of a train. Cassie right. is. She's not really confronted by uh, by Ahsoka. Essentially, Ahsoka kind of catches up to her, and Cassie, being the Django jumper, jumps yep. on top of the train. Mm -hmm. uh so ahsoka jumps on top of the train and then we cut back over to i feel like we cut back over to uh sinube sinube for a minute yes we got a quick little scene with sinube i don't honestly remember what happens though i remember we cut into them and then we cut back i don't remember why we cut over to sinube and then we cut back to to Cassie and Ahsoka and basically the the chase just goes from the top of the train into the train yep there's like a little kerfuffle and Cassie's face like hits a window and so she just busts the window out and then then boom they're inside like yep that's hey. it now we're in the train yep and uh and then Cassie takes some hostages yeah, Fairly some quickly. poor Rylothian hostages yep. again. So the, there's a Twilight mother and a child even as a hostage. So she's kind of grabbing two of them. She's got the lightsaber ignited. Ahsoka's freaking out. She and, offers to trade herself. Yep. And, uh, and she comes up with a logical point here where she's saying, she I'm totally a Jedi. Is. I'm worth a lot more mm -hmm. than these two hostages. Like you can get a lot of money for ransom if you turn me in instead of these two uh cassie doesn't believe her though cassie does believe it's some sort of trick that as soon as she releases these two and ahsoka gets nearby that ahsoka will either mind trick her or just overpower her in some way she's right which also is fair yes absolutely so the train is pulling into the station hostages are still being held uh, when they get into the station, the door opens up, mm -hmm. and Cassie tries to get out of there, but Sanube somehow is already there on the platform. He's standing right there, man. Right there at the door, so she has nowhere to go for a hot second. So she's got the lightsaber, though, but Sanube dismantles his cane that he's been holding onto, and in the top handle part of the cane is actually the hilt for his lightsaber. It's a lightsaber. It's a lightsaber. And it's got the same kind of cool uh, design. You know, it's, he's got like a more rugged cane situation. But, you know, just imagine um, uh, Malfoy's, uh, Draco Malfoy's dad. Like Lucius? how his wand. Lucius, yeah. How his wand kind of comes out of his cane as well. Mm -hmm. It was that badass moment. Um, so I, I liked that design. I thought it was pretty cool. But yeah, so so who would win in a fight, Lucius Malfoy or Tara Sunube? Sunube, I think Sunube's got the patience to to wear out Lucius. No problem. Can a Jedi block Avada Kedavra with their lightsaber? Probably not, but uh, I feel like Sunube would figure out some way around that. Can they block it with the force? Like a No, I don't I don't think the force can block that. I don't mm. think the force can block spells of certain natures. You know. Like obviously if you're you're sending like some sort of physical spell. Uh what was Harry's like main go to? Expelliarmus. The, that yeah, there was that one. I thought he had another one too. Or was it always Expelliarmus? Uh, there's definitely I remember, that one. I remember it being like a plot point in the books too, where he always lost in fights because everybody knew that was his go-to move. But I don't. It, That's yeah, like the only Armus thing he be. ever used in a That's, duel. That might be it. Yeah, it's it's probably Expelliarmus. Yeah. Uh, That's how he de defeated the Dark Lord. Is he cast Expelliarmus, and. Voldemort casted Avada Kedavra, and because they were like brother wands, they fucking hit. And that's right. Then they had to out the 
the tips touched. <laughs> they had to outforce lightning each other. Right. Right. In a um, in a visual lightning pissing contest. Right. 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 Um. So, anyways, uh. I digress. My apologies. T- Tara Sunube is able to block uh, a downswing from Cassie mm-hmm. and ends up disarming her. Ahsoka recovers her lightsaber. Uh, Cassie is then arrested. And uh, we basically start closing up this episode. Uh mm-hmm. Tara asks Ahsoka as they start making their way back through the Jedi Temple to go ahead and uh, teach what she has learned. Um, and Ahsoka accepts this favor. So so first he gives her some advice because um, Ahsoka says something to him about what she's learned along the way. And he mm-hmm. says uh, the value of moving slowly is is to always see what is ahead. Right. So she's, I don't, I don't know how this came up. Like, she's not like, Hey, you're an old fart. And you move slow. And he was like, yeah, but I move slow, but I can always see what's in front of me. Right. Um, she, but that's she kind of gives him a moral... thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She kind of gives him a thank you for helping out. And then he's like, well, before you go, let me tell you this. And mm-hmm. then she's like, well, yes, that is great. And then he's like, well, one more thing I want to ask is, Will you teach what you have learned? I think that's kind of how that conversation came about. Did you catch this weird close-up on, like, the two scared Twi'leks? Sort of. Yeah, so, like, during the hostage situation? No, so it's afterwards. Like, afterwards... Um, afterwards, Cassie is taken into custody. Then... Mm-hmm. Ahsoka and Sanube have this this weird value moment of talking about the tortoise and the hare, right? Mm-hmm. And then like their their little snippets done and then like it doesn't pan over, but I guess it like cuts to like the the mother daughter Twilek like mm-hmm. embracing on the deck of the the train station and it's like they hold each other and it's like close up on them and they still look scared. And then it cuts like to Sunube and Ahsoka at the Jedi temple. And I was Uh like, this is weird that it's like, Hey, this thing's happening. Focus on these scared people. (laughs) Go to the Jedi temple. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's just weird pacing time filling things. in this episode, I guess. I mean, like, again, like talking to the noodle shopkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I got, I got nothing for you on that one. So we hit the Jedi temple, Ahsoka and Sanube do a walk and talk and Sanube, this is when Sanube says, pass on what you have learned. And then they totally just fucking, just they fucking, interrupt a lesson. Yep. Crash they one go of Yoda's into, classes. Like yep. this seems to be commonplace. Obi-Wan Kenobi did it. And yeah. uh, Sanube and Ahsoka do it. And Sanube and Yoda seem to be like old pals. Like, yes. I imagine that they were roomies together when they were Padawans. Possibly. Definitely possible. Uh, the biggest difference between them is that we've heard of Yoda before. Mm-hmm. We have not heard of Master Sanube. Nope. Yoda is like two foot four inches tall. Sanube is six foot tall. They both have canes. Yeah. Bueno. Uh, Yoda is actively teaching, but. Sanube is napping in the library. Yep. Yeah. So I don't I don't know why Yoda gets to teach lessons, but Sanube is just sidelined to sitting in the archives and hoping that a kid will ask him about stories of whatever. I think Sanube probably taught classes for a while, and then he mm-hmm. was like, fuck this. I'm like 500 years old. I've been doing yeah. this for like 400 years. I don't want to do it anymore. So then he just went to the Jedi Archives and read the entire thing. Yep. And then after that, that's he's possible. like, that's when he dedicated Good. himself to like the the minutia of the the, the undergoings. Crime of, and yeah. Crime world like, of Coruscant. Hey, this interests me. 
That makes sense. Yeah, so anyways, um, they're in this room with the younglings, and Yoda kind of makes this snippet uh, of, or uh, he kind of leads into this thing where he's like, well, like, a lesson there is to be learned. And Ahsoka then launches into her story about uh, the value of the lightsaber, right? The value of not losing your lightsaber. Of not, yeah, and the, the responsibility that the lightsaber bears, correct? Correct. And then cue loud music. Cue loud right. music. Did it. Yeah. So that's that's this episode. That's lightsaber lost. It is lightsaber lost. So I did want to talk about the, uh, the credits on this one as far Before. as the... Uh, the voice acting goes. Yeah, please, because I did not actually write that down. <laughs> so, uh, Tara Sanube is Gregory Baldwin, who has been on the show before. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also played the police droid and the Aqualesh. Meredith Salinger is Yoni Marcy. I feel like we've heard her name before, but I didn't look up who else she had voiced. I um, have nothing for you there. James Arnold Taylor is Bounty Hunter number one, and uh, Bonamu, Banamu, sorry, and the hotel attendant. Uh, Jacasa New is again voiced by Flo Diary, and then Jamie King is Cassie Cryer. And Muck Muck Monkey. So uh, this is one thing I missed earlier where Mm -hmm. we see Weequay pirates, like maybe not pirates. I don't want to generalize, but we do see Weequay a few times throughout this episode. Uh, Carafa is a Mm Weequay. He just has like a full helmet on. So he doesn't look like a Weequay, but there's like a couple Weequay outside of uh outside of the bar where they pick up Carafa and one of them has a quacky monkey lizard uh-huh. okay and then later we see two week way outside of uh what was it like the spider what was the name arms of the hostel host- hostel spider yeah, arms spider hostel. arms hostel so above the door in Arbesh it said spider arm and then there's mm-hmm. There's a couple of weak way outside, one of which totally has a peg leg. Uh-huh. Awesome. But uh, there is a Kawakia monkey lizard in this, and he is he's credited, or the voice credit is Muck Muck Monkey. Uh, so I looked up Muck Muck Monkey. Mm-hmm. And because I remembered before there was a there was a Muck Muck. But this is a different Muck Muck. Okay. This is Lee Chi Muck Muck. So it is a different Kawakia monkey lizard than we saw in the Dooku Captured episode that the Rebels Rebels guys were on. Uh-huh. Um, they're separate Kawakia monkey lizards who essentially have this the surname of Muck Muck. So I thought that that was, I found that interesting. Yeah. Huh. Didn't notice that at all. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing mm-hmm. that probably anybody would care about. This is Lee right. Chi, and I I would imagine that this is a uh his name is an homage to Leland Chi. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was Leland doing the like the hol- the keeper of the Holocron or like the Yeah, he's been it for a while. Was he doing that thought. stuff? Back uh, in twenty ten, I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other Quacky Monkey Lizard was Pliff Muck Muck. Hmm. So, Very oh, nice. there's a Pick Muck Muck too. How about that? All right, we got a yeah. whole Muck Muck family. <laughs> Very cool. Anything else about this episode? That's uh, that's what I got as far as details go. So yeah, cool. Should we just go into thumbs up, thumbs down, or let's yeah. do it? You want to start? Go for it. I sure I'll start. I give this one a thumbs down. Yeah, really. Uh there's there's too much 
erroneous nonsense. Like, we start with... I talked a lot about the the newsreel at the beginning. We start yep. with this thing that's like... I don't know. It's just... It it feels out of place. Yeah. There's, there's a big jump from where we were to where we are. And often I'm fine with that. But... Uh, the the setup is clumsy, and then I uh, it's titled "Lightsaber Lost," and uh, the whole thing is like a panic run for Ahsoka, and mm-hmm. she meets this this Yoda analog that is basically like trying to teach her the moral of "slow and steady wins the race." Right, you know the tortoise and the hare, and along the way, it's like. New character, doesn't matter. New character, doesn't matter. New character, Mm -hmm. not name. New character, not name. New character, not name. It, it's just not cohesive enough of a thing to, to get me to tip to thumbs up. Yep. I'm not giving this one like a 5% if we were on a zero to hundred scale, Mm -hmm. but it's not, it doesn't tip above like, when I when I saw the episode title, I was like, "Ooh, lightsaber lost!" I'm pretty sure I know what this is. This is going to be an awesome episode. And then I uh-huh. I did watch it a few times, and I'm like, "Okay, that's a thing." And then when I sat down and take my notes, I'm like, "It's just I don't I don't know I you know I couldn't decide at that point." And then rethinking it later, I'm like, "It just it just doesn't it's not there." Right. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I agree with you. I'm giving this a thumbs down as well. Okay. I really like Terrace and Nube. I really like him too. And, but I agree with you. The story is a mess. The way it's told is a mess. The fact that, like, a, an episode like Legacy of Terror, I remember years after the fact, you know, because, like, the my the thing is when I watch this series, I've only watched it once through, and it was like one of those heavy binge watches as soon as the the, the show had already been canceled, right? Mm-hmm. Everything was on Netflix, even including the Lost missions or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. The the Netflix season. I have no memory of this episode from before watching it today. I have no memory, memory of, it. of the title of the episode. I didn't even know that. So, because of the way the story is told, too, as you said, we get introduced to Anakin disappears. Karafa shows up, disappears with Anakin. Karafa is one of those weird characters. It's like sometimes we have characters that are meaningful to the story and never get a fucking name. Karafa gets a name and is meaningless. Right. Like... He's not it could even be like Mag- he's, he's not even the MacGuffin. Like I don't know no. what to call him. Like Karafa like it- could literally be like, "Hey Ahsoka, we need to stop here because I need to take a dump." Right. Yeah. Like they like, hey, you want to just take like, a break right outside and we'll stop because I don't bar? want you to be in the bathroom with me while I take a dump. Right. Right. So there's all that mess happening, and um, what was I gonna say? I forgot what I said. I lost my train of thought on that. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's nothing here to it. There's no substance here. And to be fair, or to not be fair, just to make another point, I should more accurately say, um, as it's getting late over here. I'm <laughs> sure. Like my mind is falling apart. This is one of those episodes that kind of reinforces my dislike for Ahsoka. She's not uh she's not displayed in the best light here. No. And I can't argue with you on that one. Uh, you know, often I will argue in Ahsoka's defense, but this episode just doesn't it doesn't do it. It's I'm interested to see what's coming next because uh it's like I don't even fucking know. Yeah, it's, it's just again, it's just one of these weird episodes where I just feel like it, it was, it's it's fine having a standalone adventure, right? Like Star Wars, the it universe is, totally, is 
it's totally fine having a standalone adventure. I just don't feel like this is a standalone adventure. I feel like this is just kind of like, you know, this I, is an idea that wasn't fully thought through and didn't it didn't make it. Well, also, I just for this one, I just don't care. Mm-hmm. I just don't care. Like it started off promising and then as it just kept going, these things are 22 minutes, but I just it just Go, like as you said, it goes from scene to scene, and I just don't know. Stuff happens, right? Like, just what are we doing here? Yeah, to, she lost her lightsaber, but like, just to have this to have this narrative of like the tortoise and the hare. Mm. There's no it. There isn't. I feel like if it is like the tortoise and the hare thing, like from the Ahsoka centric scenes shall we call them it should be like mm-hmm. like pushing forward pushing forward pushing forward pushing forward and then when you get to uh you know when Terrace nube is able to kind of interject he's able to like he's a super jedi master he's able to like calm things down and slow things down a bit but there's no there there isn't that directive with this episode it's just right. kind of stuff happens yep it jumps it's not even fluid from beginning to end it's like nope. ooh there's all these fucking criminals and Anakin needs to fucking find this thing and Anakin finds the dude and then Ahsoka's like I'm gonna go to the library because she lost her <laughs> lightsaber right Right. and he's like alright peace and then that's it like we wasted fucking three minutes on the setup of her losing her lightsaber Here's what would have been awesome. Like, we we tweak the newsreel a bit, mm-hmm. like I talked about at the beginning. Yep. A little bit. Tweak it a little bit. And then we're already, you know, we start kind of in the slums where we start. Anakin's like, Intel tells us this is where we're going. We can still do the thing with Anakin goes inside and Ahsoka stays outside. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Kerfuffle, mob, Ahsoka loses her lightsaber, sees who it is, maybe, maybe not. That is kind of a moot point, doesn't matter. But the the dude, Karafa, is the person behind like the theft of this lightsaber. Because he knows that he was going to be hot anyway so he's got his cronies they steal her lightsaber and anakin can still be in this episode we don't necessarily need your favorite buddy maybe they need to go to him for for some advice but it can be like a little buddy cop thing with ahsoka and with anakin and they're relying on this older grizzled Yeah. I was being silent with, uh, it sounded like you had a train or something going on. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Here you go. Here you go. Uh, <laughs> no, like this on. older. I, like this dead older, air? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, sorry. Uh, this older grizzled, uh, you know, investigator that helps them. We don't need a series of, how many people do we go through? Karafa, Banamu. Uh, Knack movers, Knack movers, Yoni, Marcy, yeah, Cassie Grant. We went through five people. We mm-hmm. don't need that. You know, yeah, give I, me, yeah, give me two or three levels. Yes, yeah, again, especially in a twenty-two minute episode. But again, even in that, because they had stuffed it so much, it's what uh, it's this confusing conundrum where like there's so much happening and yet mm-hmm. there's. I don't know if th- this is a phrase I've used before, but there's, I don't think I've used it on this show, but there's, there's no there, there to this episode. Does that make there, sense? There. Yeah. There's no I substance so. to any of this shit. So, you know, like it's, it's, it, yeah, like you said, it's not an offensively bad episode. It's not yeah. one that made me pissed off. It just, it's passable. Give me another two weeks of recording this. And I'm going to forget this episode existed. I believe that by next week you are gonna forget this episode existed. 
I mean, we're recording on a Thursday night. I'm pretty sure by Saturday we'll forget this episode existed. Right. So, so yeah, that's the thing. That's the whole thing here. It's just, it's not bad. I just, I don't care. I just don't care. <laughs> yep. So, any, anything else before we get on out of here? Not that I can think of. I think, uh, yeah. Okay. This comes so, out on December 5th, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, for, I guess, the Catholics and Christians out there? May, no, maybe. Oh, dude. Maybe, you what know. What are you talking about? I got people. Uh, St. Nick's Day. Oh. That would be tonight and to tomorrow as far as the release of this goes. I guess that doesn't have anything to do with religion, though. I don't know. I don't know I don't how know. this thing works. I don't know what that is. I've never heard you of that. You don't know what that is? Nope. St. Nick's Day, it's where it's where kids leave their their list to Santa out. They put their shoes outside their bedroom door and you put your you put your list to Santa in it and then you get like a little you get some candy or a little present. Nope. Never heard of that one. Yeah. Um We'll talk yeah. about we'll talk about that one out there. Right. So anyways, uh if you would like to reach out to us you can reach out to us at uh, via email at notthenerdspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can reach out. Uh, Kevin's in charge of our Twitter at notthenerds. Uh, I handle our Facebook from time to time. That's at notthenerdspodcast. Uh, we'd also like to give a shout out to Lindsay at strangefantasymusic at gmail.com. She's the one who put the, together the jingles at the beginning and end. Uh, reach out to her if you'd like her to put together some sort of jingle for you. Uh, also, Kevin Warren, uh, we'd like to thank every time for putting together the graphics at the beginning, uh, our, our cover art, uh, the Jedi pose, as we call it, the hero pose, that is. And you can reach out to him at They Call Me K Dub on Twitter. Uh, we're available on Google Play, iTunes, uh, Stitcher, I believe, TuneIn. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're also available on youtube Uh, we drop the audios with a static image on youtube if that's another easy way for you to get to but however you're listening to us please like subscribe review us rate us please let us know how we're doing what you think what you like you know any anything else kevin not that i can think of off the top of my head uh next next week we have the mandalore plot uh, that's what's coming up next week. So until then, I've been Kevin Horde. Lorenzo Fon over here. These aren't the nerds you're looking for. Mm-hmm.